Dear St. Andrews members and friends, we have been sheltering in place, unable to physically gather together for worship and fellowship for 14 weeks now. That is a long time. And though we are now in the early stages of reopening some businesses and resuming some activities with extra safeguards, of course, there is still much uncertainty. The COVID-19 virus is still out there. And until effective treatments are discovered and eventually a vaccine, the health experts warn us to keep socially distancing, keep up the hand washing, and wear masks whenever we are unable to stay six feet apart, except within our own family, or the latest thing, a small social bubble. Well, the latest news is that our, from our county health department is that they will allow us to hold worship services starting next week outside. Inside is allowed too, but is limited to a dozen people at most since it is more risky. But outside should be safe. So we are planning to do that next Sunday. We will gather for a shortened worship service held just outside our sanctuary under the overhang with chairs the recommended six feet apart. That is, we will gather if enough people feel safe attending. We plan to send out an e-survey this week to find out how people feel. Because we do want you all to stay safe and healthy. Please continue to worship from home if you are more comfortable with that. And especially if your safety and health require it. We will continue to post a worship video each week, and we will continue online Bible study and meetings. We intend to be very cautious with transitioning back to in-person worship. It's clear to me that both this coronavirus pandemic and the Black Lives Matter protests in the wake of unjust killings have revealed just how much we are all connected. Dr. King said it well. We are all caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. And you can never be what you ought to be until I am what I ought to be. This is the interrelated structure of reality. We are all connected. And good and evil inevitably flow between and among us through these interrelated connections. And this includes both deadly physical viruses like COVID-19 and deadly social viruses like racism and hatred and injustice. But we must never forget that positives also flow among us and through us over the same pathways. Qualities like faith, hope, respect. And this week's essential tool for living in a time of pandemic, love. Good or evil depends on how we act towards one another. So listen now to one of the many passages from our scriptures that proclaim the premier importance of love. I'm reading today from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 12. Listen for God's word to you. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent God's only Son into the world so that the world might live through him. And this is love, not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent the Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. 
No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and God's love is perfected in us. For the word of God here in Scripture, for the word of God among us, and for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Yes, we are all connected in an inescapable network of mutuality. And this makes sense both from a scientific and ecological standpoint, but also from the perspective of faith. For faith affirms that all that exists has its source in the one God who created all that is. God's love brought all things into existence. And God's love is both the source and the destiny of every being, indeed, of the whole universe. Love is our reason for existing. At St. Andrews, we state this in our brief mission statement, which simply says, we exist to receive and share God's love for all. So echoing the writer of 1 John, I say again, beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. And it's not just that love is from God. The writer of 1 John goes on to boldly say that God is love. God's very essence is love. Love is God's very being. Let that soak into your heart and your mind and your soul. So when we love, we participate in the very nature of God. When we fail to love, we do not know God. First John implies that we cannot know God with just our heads, just by grasping mentally ideas and concepts about God. So all of my theological degrees, all of that knowledge of doctrine and church history, it's just that, knowledge of doctrine, concepts, ideas. God is love. That's a concept I can memorize, recall, and recite. Give me a test with a question on it. Define God according to 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. And I could answer easily, God is love. Correct, Ernie. But that doesn't mean that I actually know God. For God is known, according to 1 John, only by loving. Because God is love. When we love, we share in the very being of God. And we know God, who is love, in the loving. We only know God, who is love, in the loving. This is the point of our lives, to love one another, and so to know God in the loving, to know God, who is love. John goes on to say that when we love one another, God lives in us, and God's love is perfected in us to grow in our ability to receive and give love, to have God's love be perfected in us, to be broadened, to be deepened. This is the point of our lives. And it takes a lifetime and a lot of effort to learn to love well, especially to love those who seem or are quite different from us. If this is true in ordinary times, it is even more true in a time of pandemic, in a time of economic difficulty, in a time of social outcry and protest over racial injustices. We need the power of love now more than ever. Why? To quote Dr. King again, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. In our divided and partisan times, we need to reclaim the power of love. 
For as Dr. King also said, love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. We can't afford to remain enemies to one another. Not when there are other deadly enemies confronting us. Enemies like COVID-19. Enemies like global climate change. Enemies like the viruses of intolerance, prejudice, and unchecked abuses of power. Love especially requires that we learn to listen to one another. For attentive listening is essential to truly understand the experience of another person. There was a Hasidic rabbi renowned for his piety. He was unexpectedly confronted one day by one of his devoted youthful disciples. In a burst of feeling, the young disciple explained, My master, I love you. The ancient teacher looked up from his books and asked his fervent disciple, Do you know what hurts me, my son? The young man was puzzled. Composing himself, he stuttered, I don't understand your question, Rabbi. I am trying to tell you how much you mean to me, and you confuse me with irrelevant questions. My question is neither confusing nor irrelevant, said the rabbi. For if you do not know what hurts me, how can you truly love me? Love motivates us to listen and hear the pain of others. Love leads us to stretch ourselves, to understand the situation of people whose experiences are different from ours. What is it like? What has it been like to be a person of color in America? We who are white are self-deceived if we think we know what it, was, what it is like without having done a lot of hard, painful, and challenging listening. It's time for us to listen. It's time for us to learn how to do justice, to learn how to love kindness, and walk humbly with our God and with our fellow beings. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. Beloved, let us love one another, for God is love. Amen. I invite you to please join me now for a time of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come to you boldly, trusting your love for us as we recognize that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. If we're not so, how could we ever be brave enough to share the burdens of our heart and speak aloud the guilt that weighs heavy on our conscience? In a time of turmoil and pain, suffering and hurt, we confess our lack of action to prevent the source of this season's anguish For too long we have not loved you with our whole hearts, nor loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not listened to the pain of our neighbors, especially those of color, nor heeded their cries of anguish. We have failed to see your image in every human being, and we've torn apart instead of built up the one body of which we are all a part. We plead for mercy. We cry out for grace. Remake us by and through your love. And do it now, we pray. We are waiting. We are open. Our anxiety grows during these long days of pandemic. Our questions about how to move forward together and hope multiply as cries for justice go too long unheard. We are unsure of the steps we need to take, but we know we must take steps. We must risk change. 
Help us, we pray. We need your wisdom and your guidance from your spirit. Help us to create safe spaces where all can freely breathe. Heal the sick, the heart sick, the homesick, the long sick, and the soul sick. Bring in those pushed to the margins, the laborers not paid a living wage, the ones hurting without access to adequate health care, the lonely who yearn to be included. Cure every illness that consumes us and keeps us from abundant life. Diseases of body, mind, and spirit. COVID-19 and all-consuming greed. Addictions and the abuse of power. Violence and ever-growing opportunity gap. Move us with your deep love and compassion so that we do not turn away from the suffering of others or ignore the demands of justice and truth-telling, but instead walk toward them, trusting in the power of your healing love, which ever flows into our world, just waiting for receptive hearts to receive it and live it. Make us justice bearers and witnesses who speak the truth in love Make us light bearers and lovers, healers and helpers. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus, the Christ who showed the world your heart of love. Amen.